All right, guys, welcome back to By The Way, a studio podcast. I'm your host, Landon By The Way. Here today, we do have my editor, Bryson, down from Wyoming, and Cade, who showed up an hour and a half late. Welcome <laughs> to the set, Cade. <laughs> Thanks for being thank here. Thank you, thank you. And uh, behind the camera, actually, we do have Trevor. We got his little POV cam. He's going to make some commentary throughout. POV for the FPV. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, today... Our topic, what we'd like to talk about is work-life balance. Yep. Thoughts. Love, love that topic. <laughs> yeah. It's a great topic, actually. So this is this is a... I, I don't think it's like a creative um, industry thing. Like, I feel like generally anyone. speaking, anyone has... It's a challenge to kind of balance everything that's going on yeah. in somebody's life. I feel like the only reason it would be like a creative industry kind of topic is because a lot of people that are in it, it's like their hobby as well. Yeah. So I know for me, like, you know, when I had like a regular job, that was easy. It's like, I'm going to go when I'm scheduled Mm -hmm. and that's that. But now I'm like, I kind of want to like keep doing this like into the night or, you know, I kind of want to like, your brain's always going, you enjoy it. And so it's kind of learning how to like take life and putting it more into your life almost. It's weird. Especially when a lot of people edit and work at home right you know because then it is like yeah. your whole entire life and then it kind of overcomes really hard That's to what separate I was it. about like especially with your bison how do you balance that oh my bad guys kind of new to this um how do you balance that at home like your setup is in one room your family's in the uh, house my setup is actually not at my at my place oh really yeah yeah um my mom actually owns like a storefront in our small town and my parents formed an LLC, bought the building. They rent it to my dad's business and my mom's business, and there's multiple rooms throughout the building. And so I rent a room there. Okay. Mm. And so I have I have work separated pretty well from yeah. home. Yeah. But before you were working at home, like right, yeah. And in, but it, well, and you and you have like a smaller apartment, and so like your yeah. your desk setup was like in the living room slash yes. kitchen, yes, which I can imagine would be kind of difficult. Yes. <laughs> so before I was actually doing it full time, though, I did get to move my desk into there even bef- when it was just kind of on the side, like into I, the storefront. Yeah. yeah. So you were hiring me out for like projects here and there, and I had my own clients here and there, but I had a, a day job, mm-hmm. and so. That was there already before I was doing it, you know, for eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, and so luckily that was situated already. Mm-hmm. Um, so before it was like I was I was doing my day job and then I'm so new to like video and stuff that it was a lot of the time I'd get home and I'd be super tired. It was construction mm-hmm. and uh, I would end up working on video like at night. But that wasn't work yet. That was kind of just like what I was going for, what that I like to do. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't like, it wasn't taking anything away at that point. It was kind of just my start into the industry, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had, I, I mean, we've talked about this previously, but I had my setup in the basement of my house. And granted, it's, it's a different situation because there's a floor between you and the rest of your family and it's still pretty secluded. Yeah. Your basement's bigger than my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> but regardless, it was like it was really easy to get distracted because like my my kids, well, like yeah, I guess both my kids and my wife were just a floor away, and so if I got bored or if you know I felt like I wanted to go upstairs, and not that that was a bad thing, I I could really really easily. So there's pros and cons. It's nice to like have a quick break when you want it, but at the same time, there's also a lot of value in going to a designated place to work that's away from all those like work the things that would distract you from work and just get the work done right and then close that off and then go home and like be present home yeah otherwise you're you're mixing business and pleasure all day long and then it's really hard to actually be 100 percent in on each thing when you need to be. yeah i get a lot more done being in a separate spot yeah same yeah that's why i was so eager to get my setup here yeah when i first met you i was like can i Bring everything here because you're eager. Yeah, it sucks working at home, in my opinion. I can't do it. It's too comfortable. It's too easy to get distracted. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Well, your setup was in your bedroom. Yeah, right, right. And so I think there's I think there's a lot of creatives that have their setups in their bedrooms. I feel like for sure. I feel like like it can be convenient, but I've heard a lot of from a lot of people that like 
it's not good to work in the same place yeah. that you sleep, generally speaking. No, it's not. Why do you think that is? I think you can just get too comfortable. Like, your work is basically five steps away from your bed. Yeah. So it's easy to, like, sleep in or get distracted and shut off work and maybe start playing some games or whatever. Yeah. Whereas if you're actually in a place, quote-unquote, like, checking in or whatever, then you know you have to dial in and do yeah. what's supposed to get done. Mm -hmm. That way when you go home, it's like, if you have a laptop, yeah, you can keep working if you want to, but it's not as big of a priority when you're at home. Yeah. I think that's not good at that. That's a reason probably why the co-working space has gone so well here at the studio so. is because I think people are realizing that. I think probably pretty much everyone up there at one point has had like their setup in their room or in their house. And now this is why they have a setup here is because yeah. they, they understand that they can actually separate things. Yeah, easier. it feels real. Yeah. Like it feels like I'm going to work. Yeah. I think if you're a freelancer, you don't you often don't like legitimize what you do and you, you feel like what you're doing is kind of insig insignificant, especially when you're operating out of your own house, you know, and that's not the case. It's, that's not the reality, but it can feel that way. Mm -hmm. And then once you have a, a space to go to that is designated for work, it feels so much more legitimate. Yeah. Well, especially when, for clients, like you can't bring a client to your house or anything like for meetings. Right. And yeah. so like when we became a part of studio, even people that would like reach out to me or even reach out to Cade, we were able to meet here and just legitimize ourselves a bit more. Oh, yeah, dude. It's such a baller move when you have a potential client. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, come to my studio. Come, We'll hop in the conference room, you know, go over some stuff. Like, that's pretty sick. Yeah, it is. And so, and everyone in the co-working space can do that, which is kind of cool, too. It's like you, you pay a very small amount for what you get. And now you look like, I mean, you, you don't have to tell them that you rent a single desk at, right. at studio. Yeah. Like, let them believe that, like... This is your place because mm -hmm. in a way it is, you know, but uh, it's yeah. going to become a studio advertisement. So everyone, <laughs> if you sign up now, you get 50 spaces, not studio dot com. <laughs> co -working. We do have a couple of desks left, but that's not why we're talking about this. That's just happened to be where the conversation turned. What are your thoughts, Trevor? Because you you I don't think have you ever really had like a, a desk set up at where you've lived or do you just kind of operate on your laptop and just go wherever. Yeah, I mean, as far as, like, a legit setup with, like, a Cade Kreger setup, no. <laughs> mm. Or a Landon By The Way setup, no. Impossible. Yeah, like, no, you, I... You could never get to that level. Yeah. No, never. I <laughs> would always just work on my MacBook, yeah. um, and I, like, had a desk in my room at my old apartment in Salt Lake. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, coming to studio helped me a lot, and even when I was here, it, like, we're here on Saturdays, sometimes Sundays, you know, like... For a while, it was very intensive of just, like, I always felt like I was working because yeah. I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, because, it, like Bryson said, it was it's also our hobby. Like, we, whenever I go on a trip, like, I'll bring my camera and I'll bring my drone just for fun. But then it turns into, like, oh, I could use this for my own platform and my brand and Instagram and stuff. And so, like, for a while, it really, I don't know. Like, I felt, like, bogged down just because of how much time I was putting into it. And so now I've actually recently, like the past two months, like whenever I'm driving here or driving home, like I put my phone on the other seat and I just like listen to music and like go oh, into so you don't like text a different mode. No, never. Uh -oh. no. <laughs> yes. Wow. No, never. Uh, anyways, but I don't know, just like trying to differentiate the two helps out a lot. Yeah. Like, even when you were texting me the other night, I was like, I'm just going to go to bed. I need to turn yeah. off work for a and, second. Uh, yeah. Every time yeah. Landon texts me, I just, eh. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm. I, I try to. I try to not. It's always so inconvenient. I try to. Not, <laughs> You're the worst. I try to not text you guys in the evening, but some sometimes it's like we have we have a shoot right. early morning, and I have to send you details when I get yeah. in later at night. You know, and that's just the reality. But generally speaking, I do. I do try to turn off those things, and so mm -hmm. I make exceptions for like our team if we need to talk about something that's happening the next day and it's important. But if I get a text from a client and it's after like. 7 p.m. I'll probably wait till the morning to respond anyway because I don't like it, it's it's past work hours. I don't need to be yeah, consumed kinda, with those thoughts. Kind of like how you texted it at 12:50 a.m. Shooting podcast tomorrow at 9:30 a.m. And then kind of how like you showed up at 10:30. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who, yeah, I don't know who's at fault here. Uh, um, two way street. Yeah, two way street. No, but that that balance is is absolutely important. Yeah, and it, it really is, like, tricky just how much um, you can love something. Like, when I am taking the time off or when I am relaxing or I have a minute or whatever, and, you know, you go on YouTube and just kind of scroll, 
my whole feed is still like filmmaking and mm-hmm. still like lighting and budget setups and like all the all these different things and that that's what I enjoy to watch. So I'm like it's weird cuz like I'm always working, I'm always getting educated, but it's like so enjoyable. Yeah. You know. So like there's things that, you know, I don't know. That stuff is relaxing to me and mm-hmm. that's not really like work, but Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a bad thing to love what you do and want to like still oh, like, it's great. It's you know, best. be in touch with that even after work hours. Yeah. But I think what's interesting here is we have we have four people and two of us are family 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 men, family man, I don't know, whatever. I'm a family guy. Married and have Married kids. and have kids. Thank you, Katie. B- yeah. Big family guy. And the other here. two are are super single. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Never seen any Emphasis single. on single, yes. You know, and we're all in our twenties, but like there's there's two kind of genres here in this room. Mm. And I'm curious because I got I got married pretty early and so I didn't really like and I, I didn't have like a huge career before I got married. But I'm curious like how that balance is for you like what what does that work life balance look like? Because obviously you come to work, and we know what your work schedule is, yeah. but like, what's the I, life I feel side? Like, yeah, the life side for me at least, and I, I feel like it's probably a little similar with Trevor. Is just like personal health, like fitness, and hmm. just doing things you love. To yeah. be honest, and I mean those things are literally just like basketball, the gym, and just like consuming content. Do you feel? Um, do you feel weird when you don't get to like do those things? Like if you have a week yeah. where you work, you work so much and you, you don't have that on your schedule. Like, yeah, I feel weird. Make you feel off. Especially now if I don't go to the gym and like, if I'm at the studio all day and then I just go home and just don't do anything for the rest of the night, I feel super weird. It feels off. Hmm. I feel like incomplete. And that's why I really like try to emphasize on forcing myself to go to the gym after like a long day of the studio. Cause it's just a way to like reset for the next day. I think. Yeah. Um, cause like you said, it's not like I'm going home to a wife or any kids or anything. And so going home to your mom. Yep. Going home to my mom. <laughs> Hi mom. Until next week. Right? Not for Trevor? long. Yo, until next, yep. until next week. House. We're going to have a house. Oh yeah. They actually did just get a, a town pad. home together. So it's exciting. No, it's a house. Yeah. It's not a town home. It's a house. Oh, it's a house. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Oh, I thought it was. Did terrible. you not know, watch pictures of it? Instagram? <laughs> I did, but this I, guy. uh, I don't know real estate, dude. you know? So. <laughs> How about you, Trevor? What's that work life balance look like? Um, like I said, I'm definitely trying to like differentiate the two um, by just like you, I'm a little bit different than Bryson. So when I'm on Instagram, I feel like I've been in it for been in like content creation for three years ish. And so now it's almost like a bit too much. And so like at late at night, I'm like watching it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, why am I not posting videos or anything? And I'm like, I'm just so focused on like, what is the next thing I can make? And at at times it's really good for me, but then at times I just need to like throw my phone across the room and yeah. just sit down and just, you know, do something else, you know? Um, but as far as like, like children and family, like I feel less pressure on a lot of what I do just because I, I'm not providing for anybody else except for myself. Yeah. Um, so that's relieving. Um, but it also makes lonely makes it lonely. True. Yeah, I like, I think it's there, there's pros there's pros and cons, but like there's just different stages of life too, you know. Oh yeah, yeah neither is neither none of them are bad. You know, like I think that it's really cool that you guys get to do something like this beforehand and kind of mm-hmm. get a foundation and yeah. like secure your path of what you want to do because I mean, I was talking to Landon the whole way home from St. George yesterday about like I didn't know what my like path was and stuff like that. And that's something I kind of want to go into and learn more about like you and Trevor is like what got you into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like I've always loved doing this stuff, but I never saw it as a career option and I never thought it would work out just how my mindset was and stuff. I, you know, it was very much a dream and you know, like I think that it's really cool that you guys don't have to, you know, get into your mid twenties or later to kind of figure that out or get your shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's literally the only reason that like I'm here is because like when I was uh, 21, like I I realized that I didn't really have anything in Arizona keeping me there. I didn't have a uh, girlfriend, wife, whatever, and so it allowed me to take bigger risks because it was at the end of the day like only affecting me. And so dropping out, moving to Utah. Um, you know, working with mountain ops, quitting mountain ops to do freelance work, like all of these decisions that were key in my career 
I was able to take without any pressure because I didn't, it didn't affect anybody else but me. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely, I, I, I vouch for people to, to not jump into like anything serious too young. Um, like in high school, I feel like that's kind of, I don't know, it was very heavily in my mind. Maybe that was just my upbringing of like girlfriend or marriage and everything else. But now I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just glad that I didn't jump in anything too soon and stupid. And, and it's literally just, working for yourself and yeah. and getting up to a point where you want to be you know like late 20s like how do i want to so- set myself up for the future right yeah yeah so i d- i just wanted to kind of go off into like what got you into creating yeah i and we kind of touched on this in a previous episode but i mean i think the passion kind of grew sophomore year of high school um just consuming content And slowly realizing that stories were being told, like emotions were being conveyed, like, wow, these videos are making me feel a certain way. And a lot of those were like Sam Coulter videos. I think the one that made me just go like, holy shit, this is sick, was his, um, I can't remember the full title, but it's like the Tim video. It's his video dedicated to Hey Hey Tim. Tim. I think that one was like, whoa. like Dude, that was such a powerful video. Yeah, after watching that, I was like, wow, you can do stuff with this. Like, this is dope. And so... Then I just started taking some creative classes in high school just for fun to like see what it was about, and that's when I just fell in love with it. At first, I thought it was video, um, and then it kind of went into photo and uh, graphic design and whatnot. Then obviously I went to school for film, but um, I think the passion at the end of the day lies in like photo and just design stuff. Vibes. Yeah. I love it. Vibes. I love it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You've really, you've really dialed in your uh, skill sets these last few months we really defined yeah you know what what, what you want to do and where your passions lie which has been really right. cool to see yeah but yeah i'm lucky i feel lucky that i figured out what i love so young like i'm not going to school obviously but i know so many people that are going to school and they change their path like six different times and it costs them so much money yeah because they're just not sure what they want to do and so i'm just glad that from the start, I kind of knew what I wanted to do and just kind of went down that path. But yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. I was kind of the same. It was, I think, us around the same time, like 15, 14, 15. Yeah, by the way, I've known Bryson since we were like 12. Yeah. Like, we go back very far. far. How yeah. did you guys reconnect? Were you guys st- like talking in the previous years up until? Yeah, I school? mean, so we, I mean, we went to school. Been connected. <laughs> yeah. We met in middle school, pretty good friends. I don't know. I don't know what. I think it was seventh grade. Yeah, we just. I I don't know either. Literally we just, no idea. Like, started hanging out, but just you know, school friends for whatever reason. We just we had a connection. We were, we loved hanging out with each other. And it wasn't photography or video or no, anything like, at that I, point. I think just, at that age, it's just like you just find someone that you vibe with, yeah. and you yeah. don't have to have many shared interests yeah. per se, but you just have a good time with them. Yeah. And then I think. Um, I think throughout high school, like we were, we were st- still good buds. We didn't like hang out like super often, but we were still friends. And then after you and I, we left on missions, and then we got back. I think for what I, I don't know if you reached out or if I randomly reached out, but I think I've never really thought deeply about this. But I feel like I reached out because I was at a point in my life where I felt like I didn't have many like friends, you know. But I always remembered like how tight you and I had once been and like and how 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 we still kept in touch, you know, and for whatever reason, I felt like I really wanted to like get back in touch because we had so many things in common and we just we just vibed so well together, you know, and so we got back in touch. And then once I started working out stuff with studio and I I wanted to like make my first hire like pretty soon, um, I think things picked up really quickly and we knew that we wanted to like work together and do more together. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, ever since I can really remember in our relationship, it's always just been like, um, closeness, like not even spending a crazy amount of time together, but just, I remember being at your house a lot and then we'd like, you know, walk to McDonald's or (laughs) watch shows or whatever it is, you know, like there's just this really good connection and, you know, it led to. And we didn't even help each other like get into the lane of creating. I, I think we kind of got bit, into though. it a little bit separately. Well, because uh-huh. I think in in high school you got you got I mean especially at the time this was twenty 
you know, 14, 2015, yeah. you were actually like pretty big on Instagram, at, at, especially at the time. You were yeah. like 20K, something like that, just doing photography. Yeah. And uh, you were you were pretty, pretty freaking popular at the time. And I saw you doing that. And I always I always liked photography. I was getting into video at about the same time. Yeah, I don't think I don't think like you being in a photo was the reason I got into video, but they kind of like coincided and we kind of got into it at about the same time. Yeah, we got into it at the same time. Yeah, for sure. And then we had that in common. I think that just stuck with me was like how talented you were. And I, I because you were doing so well with with the photo stuff and made it inspired me to do more photo. And then I think I just hung on to that over the years. And that's why I reached back out because I'm like, we had that connection mm-hmm. and like that in common. And like, I, we still do those things. So like, Let's see if we can work together and do more stuff. Yeah, together. ten years later. Yeah, that's wild. What we're doing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Find a good friend. Yeah, you know? <laughs> have a team of day. friends. Yeah, and now it's like the way that because um, Trevor and and Cade were hired before me, obviously, and I was kind of nervous about coming down or you know coming on a shoot and being around him. I just didn't know him very well, but. It it was like instant, like I feel like we clicked really well, like from the start. Yeah, like I I met Cade and it was like, "What's up?" You know, we were out we were out in Logan Canyon, and that yeah, was the Bear Lake shoot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I and I jumped in his car, and I feel like we were like laughing. I was over, laughing like, so hard instantly. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Bryson's a, like pretty freaking funny. Like yeah. you just like. Uh, well, think... no, actually, no, not that funny. Yeah. Sometimes. No, you just like you're super sarcastic and you like you say things with like a serious tone but you're like yeah. totally joking and so i think it's just easy to like have that connection and yeah and laugh yeah so like got to like met Cade like first and then we were shooting with trevor and like i don't know it was just like easily like i was just making fun of him right away and yeah i think you called me like, i mean that's not hard to make fun of Cade. <laughs> like there's i think you called me like a little bitch like right when we met and i was like oh thank nah, you I would, <laughs> hey, I that doesn't do that. sound like that. i wouldn't do that no <laughs> No shot. <laughs> no, yeah, there was definitely a pretty quick no, connection, I, and we vibed really well together. I I love it. Like I love how because my humor is very like you know making fun of each other. Mm-hmm. I, I just think it's so funny when people make fun of each other and impersonate each other and roast each other. For me, it's just like you know, some people can't take it. Maybe a lot of people can't take it. I don't know. But when you when you're around other people that do the same thing. Dude, it's like there's nothing funnier. I feel, I feel like, like it builds like your relationships too for the team. Right, yeah. It's not always just like serious work. Yeah. yeah. I was just glad that like I was able to connect with you and Trevor yeah. so quickly. Kind of shook me a little bit, honestly. I was just like, do I know these guys from something? I feel like a lot of us just connected like super quickly. I know I connected with Trevor pretty quick, Landon pretty quick. Well, I mean, there's a reason you guys are on this team. Right. Like there's a reason. There's like I've I've – not to brag, but I kind of curated this team here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and the, and the reason you guys are here is because you're you're good at what you do. But like the biggest, the reason that I have people send me a video when when I'm looking for to hire somebody is because I just want to see like yeah. how you talk and like your your approach to this potential job offer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, there's a lot of people that can fill like the responsibilities that this job entails. Um, and you guys, you guys were cream of the crop. Like, you're great for it. But I also want to just like have almost have a conversation with you. And it's like that first once I saw the video, I can kind of um, sift through and see like, OK, like I can see yeah. something working out with this person. I want to hop on a FaceTime call. And with Trevor, especially, I hopped on that call and he was like, because there's a lot of people that like get really nervous. And, you know, and that's and that's fine. Yeah. And, I, and I understand that. And but, that, but you're no one special. <laughs> <laughs> were but you nervous? A little bit, yeah. So, okay, well, you you were nervous, but, like, I could just tell talking to you that, like, you and I had a lot in common, and, like, the conversation was conversation was just so easy to have. And that was the biggest thing I was looking for is, like, obviously you need to have certain skill sets that I can work with, and, we you know, we can grow from there. But I wanted to make sure that we vibed really well together. And instantly I was like, Trevor's a stud. Like, I, I could see this going really, really well. Thank you. And then I interviewed Cade, and I'm like, okay, well, Cade's less of a stud, but there's a possibility <laughs> here. So that's why I hired Trevor first, and then I waited a month, and then I hired Cade. Uh. No, but, like, similar thing. I actually remember, <laughs> I remember your, the FaceTime call I had with you. I did, too. You were just, you talked so much. 
<laughs> you, were, you were just rattling off. Nothing's like, changed. Yeah. <laughs> like like nervous talking, you yeah. know. And I, I could tell you're a cool guy, mainly because of the notch in your eyebrow oh. and the neck tattoos. <laughs> um, but you talked so much, and I was like, I was like, okay, okay, Cade seems cool, but he's a he's a talker, so <laughs> I'll give it a little bit of time. And then uh, I once- remember I was in the parking lot of Vasa, about to go in, and you Facetime me, and then you were like, I'll connect with you again, like maybe in a few days or whatever. And then I was playing basketball, and you called me again mm-hmm. to tell me that I didn't get the job, and I was like. Damn it! <laughs> Probably in a few days. Yeah, but like, a, but like a couple a couple weeks later, yeah. I had you hop on a shoot with me anyway because I wanted to try you out. Because I think I think you you talked a lot, but that's because you were nervous, yeah. you know. But I could still tell like through that that like you would be a really fun person to, yeah. to have around, you know. And so I I didn't want to like completely omit you from that possibility, and I'm glad. Yeah. But, well, now that Trevor's starting to get tattoos, we don't really need Cade. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better watch out. Yeah, it's coming for your Shoot job. Me off. No, but I think I think there's a reason that everyone connects so well, and it's because like you all kind of it, it, everything works together. Yeah. Like Bryson and I have vibed well for ten years. All of us vibed well, and so it's it's only natural that everyone yeah. works together really well. It, and whenever I am able to go on a shoot, usually one of you guys is like left behind, and I'm so cut about it. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to spend time with everyone. Yeah. Like, like Kate, Kate didn't come to our trip this last week. Yeah, I was, I was like, "What? You're not coming?" Granted, we got to hang out with Kate's dad, who hooked yeah. us up with these four by fours. And he's shoot. he's basically Kate. So yeah, I guess like way, <laughs> way better than Kate, but just like a little bit older. <laughs> yeah, and so in a way, we had Kate on that yeah. shoot. But yeah, I mean, we, when we were talking again last night on the drive, I was talking about how cool it is to be part of a team, like. Mm-hmm. Because I grew up playing sports, but I was never like I was never in competitive sports. I never like tried out, and I didn't. I don't know. It just wasn't something that I loved basketball. You're really you. You're, you For, could have easily made the team, but like I just didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, that's a lot of time, and you know, we probably wouldn't win. So like, why <laughs> practice? We wouldn't I'm just win. gonna go play junior jazz. And what do you know? Did you crush junior jazz? Though? There was like senior year. We got we got the big banner. We won. They started tournaments. I was just happy we got that. I was like, this is better than a state chip for sure. Yeah, but um, junior jazz. but yeah, like I, I was talking to you about just like it's so cool being a part of a team. Like it it definitely pushes me to step up because I don't want to be the weak link. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we want to keep that Cade. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has one role to play, and that's to make us all feel really good about ourselves. Yeah. Right? So, so far, so, so good. Yeah. So I don't want to, you know, I got to keep him where he's at. Yeah. But no, being a part of a team, like I want to see everyone win. Like, yeah. And I was telling you, like, I've never felt that before for anyone. Like, I've just like always been like, yeah, you know, it's cool to see people do well or people that I know do well. Um, but now with us. I'm just like, I'll do anything to help Kate. I'll do anything to help Trevor, you, like, you know, we need something done. I'll I'll do my best to do it and things like that. And I think that's really special. That's helped me a lot to put in work. Do you, I'll, Bryson, I'll start to send you all my footage. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious, Bryson, how maybe at the start, maybe you've shifted a little bit or if you still deal with it, but like how you handle the pressure of knowing that you're basically the only editor and a lot of these projects rely on basically you delivering it, you know? I mean, obviously we all have our own roles that right. has pressure because we're kind of the only ones that do those specific roles since we're still a pretty small team. Mm-hmm. But how do you deal with that? It's like oh, you're kind God. of responsible for Never getting it, it done by that <laughs> deadline. <laughs> Never thought about that before. We've don't, had, don't put all this, he's done I'm starting to freak out. <laughs> yeah. <a little> <laughs> she was <laughs> doing good well, I'm curious because point. before Landon hired you, we were going through a few different options and all those options basically didn't deliver. Right. And that's kind of like the key factor, you know. See, and I didn't I didn't know that either, you know, like I didn't know that there's been trial and error through, you know, people not working out and stuff. I, I kind of did. I think you kind of mentioned it, but Yeah. Um the big pressure was like like I said earlier, I'm so new at this. Mm-hmm. Like I started video just over a year ago, honestly. And um I've never I'd never thought that I would do video. Which is insane to have started a year ago and be where you're at no, as an editor. Seriously, as a photographer, I, I was telling Landon, he came over when we were like 17, 18. He had this gaming laptop. I was like, dude, why do you have that RGB <laughs> clunker? 
you know, and he was like, vomit, he was dude. like, dude, it's freaking strong. <laughs> it's strong. I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't think I said it like that or it, even oh, said that. But yeah. I I remember it's freaking strong. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. No, but he was because I was like, I was like, oh, maybe video's cool. Like, can you show me a little bit of Premiere? And you open Premiere and you don't know anything about video. Oh my gosh, it's kind of overwhelming. So first. overwhelming. Yeah. And so you see all these different like sections of things and numbers and you know whatever and you're like you got to open a bin and you got to drag and drop and then you got to open this and do these settings and blah blah and i was like yeah i'm just gonna be a photographer maybe and <laughs> stick to just stick taking to a sliders. picture and edit <laughs> edit my lightroom photo yeah. maybe someday ai will come along and i won't even have to do that <laughs> no i was just like yeah video is not for me I, my brain can't handle it i can't handle it and so um yeah, it was just crazy. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere. Where I was like, I kind of like it, like a lot. I like looking at it. I like um, learning about it, and so kind of got into it. And so the real pressure about you know becoming an editor for studio was like, Landon's an amazing editor. Yeah. So I'm like, how am I supposed to? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pretty amazing. No, you are. <laughs> Part of the best. Yeah. Are. <laughs> Dude, like you are. So that to me was like where the pressure was when I was first starting. That was a lot of my conversations with my wife was like, how am I supposed to like deliver to clients who are hiring Landon for a specific thing and make it kind of look cohesive Mm -hmm. with what he offers, his brand, the brand of studio. And that was kind of the part where I was a little bit nervous. But Landon's been very good about like mentoring and yeah, letting me know that like, you know, I don't have to know everything right now. Oh, for sure. Well, I, I spent... That, that's the thing is, like, if you... For someone like yourself who's in photo and then getting into video, like, you feel like you need to understand anything and everything about video editing to be a good video editor. Mm-hmm. But that's not that's not the, the reality of it. You need to know enough to do just your specific job. And you can grow from there, absolutely. But you don't need to, like, learn everything right off the bat. Yeah. So when I first brought you on... We spent probably a month going back and forth where up until that point where you were hired, I was editing pretty much everything. If yeah. I could outsource things Which here and I there. can't believe it's, from my point it, of view now, like how much you, you do and how much I do. I'm like, how how do you juggle it was a lot of business? Which is which is why I brought you on and, and you've been like it's been the greatest like asset to have you on because it frees up my time to actually like sell and yeah. manage pro- yeah. projects and stuff. But I spent that first month with you like pretty closely where I would I would edit a project and I would film it. Like I'd have a Loom video going, screen recording, camera on me, microphone, where I'd actually just edit the whole project and I'd go f- start to finish. And I just, I would edit how I normally would, but I was just walking you through it and just pointing out different things. And we did that for probably two or three different projects. Mm-hmm. And we'd, we'd focus specifically on the editing aspect. We'd focus specifically on the coloring aspect. But we did that for a while. Yeah. And um, I think by me doing that and you being able to like follow along, it showed you just, I taught you just the things that you needed to know to do these projects and no more. And then after that, you could, you could pursue whatever you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, on top of that too, at first, um, you'd wanted me to edit in Premiere Pro, which I'd never done before either. I mean, you were in Final Cut, I was. but you were also, you were only in Final Cut for a few months, right? I was in Final Cut. Yeah. Like, I mean... Probably for like seven, eight months. Okay. And so I was very like familiar with that, you know. Well, I think the reason I wanted you in Premiere, I, I really so don't I care. So I projects. Yeah, and... I don't care now. But the reason I wanted you in Premiere, at least to start out, right. was because my expectation was that you would start a project and get it to a really good point, And then you'd need to share the project file with me. And then I'd, I'd wrap it up and fine tune right. some things. Yeah. But the, what happened is that we only did that for maybe a couple projects. It wasn't very many mm-hmm. until you got to the point where I actually didn't even need to step in and make any adjustments. And then, and then it got to the point where you're like, Hey, like if you're not, if you don't need to make adjustments, like, do you mind if I just edit in final cut? Yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah, bro. Like, I don't care. Like you're freaking crushing it. I don't have to worry about the stuff yeah. that you're cranking out. So do whatever is most comfortable for yeah. you. So that was kind of a learning curve too. And I understood it. I was like, yeah, it will be nice to be able to get, you know, the timeline done and all this stuff and all the, everything lined up and then have you fix it. And I was like, you know, I didn't know if that was normal or not. It was just like, that. that's a smart idea. Yeah. So that was kind of a, a learning curve at first. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad with the workflow that we have now. I feel like it's super efficient. I'm happy with it. And 
things have gone pretty well so far. So yeah, I mean, how long has it been? It's been like three months, I think, since at least. I mean, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> in front of my face. Thank you, kid. My yeah, bad. dude. No, I, and I, I think the timing lined up. I think, and we were talking about this too yesterday. But like, I brought, I brought Trevor on when I most needed him. I brought him on when I needed someone to essentially hold the camera and like film me talking to the camera. I was doing like my thirty so tips hard in thirty, <laughs> thirty tips in thirty <laughs> days, and uh, and a couple other little client things. And Trevor told me he's like, I'm pretty sure I'm a little overqualified for this job, and I was like, Yeah, you probably are, but like this is where I have to start, and we moved from there. So I had him doing that, and then when he kind of excelled and, and we were moving forward, I'm like, okay, well, let's bring on Cade to do what Trevor was just doing. And so we've slowly just like made these you know, steps and progressed with the team. And then a few months ago, it got to the point where I was like, I can't edit everything and manage this team and productions and everything. And so bringing you on was like amazing timing for us because it's like, okay, now I have way more free time. Um, and you were doing it was a HVAC or it was insulation yeah, or something HVAC, yeah. HVAC. So construction. And I'm like, I, I basically asked, I was like, what do you make doing HVAC? How many hours a week do you work? And you told me, I was like, okay, I'll match that. Like, can you come work for me? And you're like, yeah. And so like, it just, it worked out perfectly. Such a flow. So you get sick. chills. So sick. <laughs> it worked out perfectly. Cause like, I really needed that. And I think you were ready to get out of that job and you wanted to pursue content creation full time. I mean, when the, when the opportunity comes, honestly, it's so funny. Um, like, you know, I'm going to bring up Kanye. <laughs> Go ahead. Right here. Um, that like same day I heard an audio and it was like him talking about when an opportunity comes, you take it and something about like, you know, and if the opportunity isn't there yet, you work for when it does come, like they mm-hmm. will come. And so I was just like, bro, that, that is exactly what just happened. Like yesterday, mm-hmm. you know, like I just got hit up and the opportunity was there and it was just like. You take that. You don't question it. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, it's only uphill from there. Yeah. Uphill in the in the good way. Yeah. yeah. Not like it's hard to walk uphill way. <laughs> no, the the. <laughs> anyways, that's the, the timing. <laughs> the timing was 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 perfect. It could not have been any better. Yeah. And now you don't even have, like you sent all of us up to Wyoming. I was already there, but. You send all of us up, and a lot of the time now, you don't even have to really worry about... No, and, and like that that next step, and the reason we just posted, a, or I just posted a job listing for a production assistant is because, um, I obviously, I handed off the editing responsibilities, and Trevor has now become head of production, um, but I feel like I still need to support Trevor, depending on the project, and be a second shooter if I feel like he needs it, especially if it's a client that we haven't worked with, and we want to make a good first impression. It's, it's just good to have like the main players there. Um, but it's gotten to that point where it does take up a good amount of my time. Like this week, it was four out of five days of the work week that I was gone shooting stuff. And so now that next step is finding a production assistant so that Trevor can head the production like he has been. And then he can have an assistant that he can count on for everything, you know. Yeah. And so we're just making these tiny steps to uh, allowing me to to really be the, the owner and the founder and, and manage everything right. and not have to be required to be on different things so if if trevor's the head of production and he has like an assistant don't you think he needs like a head of production like sprinter van or something for a lot of these shoots <laughs> right i think so yeah. and it could probably double as a as a converted camping van too right oh <laughs> yes yeah, so you can go <laughs> save on. us a lot of money <laughs> yeah i think so I, it makes sense bro we <laughs> i don't think we ever talked about this publicly but remember the ambulance thing yeah did you, did you ever hear about that absolutely not i got i got this close <laughs> put, so put the camera close. on me i got this close <laughs> put the camera on <laughs> they need to they need to visualize i'm i'm if, if you're just listening Jeez, I, I have my really thumb close. and my pointer finger really close to each other because i was very close to buying an ambulance in new york actually there's there's one in denver and there's one in new york but i was close to buying one of them for about around like 10 to 15k you even texted us. You're like, so what if we buy plane tickets and fly out there and drive this thing back? Yeah. yeah. I was going to buy an ambulance, bring it back, and convert it into like a production, like a, a grip did band. It come with, did it come with a defibrillator? Defibrillator? I uh, I think so. That's a steal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were really close, though. I was really close. That'd um, be cool. Yeah. Like, I've, I saw a YouTube video of another production company that did that back on like the East Coast or something. And I was like, oh, that's actually 
pretty freaking Our cool. vibe is more like Corvette and Raptor, though. Yeah. I feel like not, yeah, I think that's <laughs> not ambulance fans. Dude. But I, I think about it sometimes, too, and I'm like, ah, that would be actually like pretty sick. It's just such a different way to pull up to a shoot. Yeah. With an ambulance. And we like, have flashing what? lights on it. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing that that never actually happened and then we would just keep it like with all the stickers and the and the lights and stuff so it can be used as a prop for yeah i mean we'd use it for 90 percent of our shoots <laughs> in the would, background yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a prop we always run into the issue of not having an ambulance right uh, so many times yeah i always have that problem i just have to rent my ambulances and it's getting so expensive uh, you know yeah <laughs> Um, where was I? Anyway, so we didn't buy we didn't buy that ambulance, but um, now I st- even even now I still think it would be nice to have like a sprinter or a van of some sort. I, like up until about two months ago, we just I just had like the Corvette yeah. and then like my wife's minivan if we needed to haul stuff, and then you guys have like your cars. Um, and then a couple months ago, I bought a truck, and that's been really nice to have just yeah. like that that vehicle we can use for pretty much any shoot. Super roomy. Has the bed. Let's just get a vehicle for a tax write off, and then the gas can be a tax write off. Should we make it a goal to get a to get a van this year? I think it'd be dope. I think that'd be a sick goal. Actually, I think it would be like, as long as I get a raise before that. <laughs> no, everyone. Well, here's the thing: everyone's gonna have to take a pay cut. Oh, sh- to get the van. Okay, fine. No, but I, I think, think if we're all on board, though. yeah, if no. we're all on board. <laughs> I saw. I remember seeing. Um, Override Films van on yeah. Angular one time, and I was like, that is so sick. Yeah. Even their place has, like, Override. I was chatting with with Jordan, the, yeah. the owner, the other day. He lives right next to me. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, and they have, I mean, he has two Sprinters and and a blacked-out Raptor with a, with a crane Damn. camera thing on top. I remember top. seeing that. And I think he has a, a Porsche, like a Cayenne with... Wait, who's this? Override Films. Park. Oh. I actually really I, I was I was texting him. I was like, can we get you on the podcast? Like can we like chat with you? Because he does he he does such sick productions. Yeah, he definitely would have replaced me on this one. <laughs> sure if he was available. Well, yeah, I don't want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> no, I think at some point he would be fun to have on. But um yeah, anyways, a sprinter van would be sick. Let's make a goal. Let's say yeah. by let's just say by the end of the year yeah. we make a goal to at least have out. purchased a sprinter van and we're, we're at least building it out. Or a school bus. We can get a school bus. No. Yeah. I refuse. <laughs> yeah. Like Ambulance. a small one that you went on as a kid? or like <laughs> The short one. <laughs> yeah, were, you, were you on the short bus, Kate? No. <laughs> I wasn't. No, that Damn is a it. common misconception. <laughs> Everyone thinks I did. See, so guys, what happens to me here at studio? I just get picked on. Yeah. Kate's like the Toby of the group, you know? Landon always says yeah, he's the, the worst. <laughs> Never seen The Office. What? Landon always says I was born in like 2008. Because you're so young. Things. Yeah, you're, well, well, you were born in 2002, right? Between 2008 and 2006 is not, you know, like it's not that much of an exaggeration. Were you born in 2002? One. 2001? Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. You don't even remember freaking Y2K. Yeah. You weren't even there. <laughs> so crazy. It is weird. We're all 90s babies. And he has a, the best beard in the bunch. Yeah. <laughs> so frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying. And the best tattoos. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, Trevor's is pretty cool. It's I think it's, it's probably close second, right? He, well, yeah. No. It has to be. I'd say so. I'm probably second. Well, he has a, yeah, he, uh, he's got a cool one. <laughs> you probably couldn't even see it to the camera right now. No. no it's, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if we do get a van, we're parking it at our house. We have yes, a we have a we side garage or not a side garage but like a side. Uh, we lit- we literally have a seven thousand square foot where or three thousand square foot warehouse <laughs> with here. Tons of parking. With tons of parking <laughs> no, spaces. No, yeah, we're parking here. It's okay. huge. I think it's funny how this this episode started out as work life balance and now we're talking about just work. Us <laughs> and ambulance fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man. Well, but, it's not supposed to be scripted. No, it's not. I feel like I feel like if somebody listens to this episode with the intention of like figuring <laughs> something out for themselves and like they, they want to find an answer to like their balance problems. Well <laughs> that came out wrong. Unfortunately. <laughs> I think I think they might get something out of it. Yeah, I think it's been pretty good. I feel like um just seeing like, you know, we're all very new into an actual production company style yeah. work. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time and work before that. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I think it's it's helpful to know like your background, your background or our background. Mm-hmm. 
and just how long it's been or like how much work, you know, it does take. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. It's not anything that I ever regret or didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. You love it. And so all it really is is patience and improving yourself and you'll, you'll meet the right people. Yeah. And you want to enjoy your time. Like work right. should be enjoyable. And we talked a little bit about this last time with Saker, like, we enjoy our time with our client and we're invested in everything in that. And it makes that relationship better and it makes it more fulfilling when you have kick-ass content for them. Yeah. And it's, it, I feel like it's the same as a production team. Like Bryson said, like we want to see each other winning. We all have our own things going on outside of studio and we just want to see each other succeed. So I feel like that comes, that's a very like important part of like, yeah. this work-life balance. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I was telling Landon on the way home, sorry just about how I did have like a handful of clients up on my own, but I've just been so like down to put all of my effort into studio just because I believe in it so much. And it's so like, we're so tight knit. Yeah. So that's been really cool. Like I just, you know, I'm like all in. That was fun but, though. When, before I, before I brought you on full time, I was contracting you out. I, we were in, we were in Washington DC and you were getting into your own production stuff. So we we're sitting in the old, the hotel room dude weirdest hotel weirdest room hotel ever. room anyway we're, si we're sitting there and we're talking about like future stuff like what you want to do what i want to do and at that point I, I couldn't bring you on full time but you had your own clients and i i had like a list of different names for, yeah. for business for uh, production companies and one of them was content lab content lab with C and he, he's wearing a, a sweatshirt if you can see it but cntnt content Let's our name to that I actually think it's a sick. It was like one of my top. It was that and Studio were my top two. And I was like, I love Bryson. I'm gonna give him my second choice. You can yeah. use this if you want it. Honestly, sell it to me. dude, it's no, it's no. Sell it to me. Okay, fine. How much? <laughs> <laughs> sell me the domain. Uh, no. So I was just thinking, like, I think Studio is by far the coolest. Like, I I think Content Lab is cool, but like, honestly, Studio with the two eyes. I, Unreal. Inspirational. Content, I, uh, content Lab out. is getting dissolved into studio, though. So we're working on that deal. We're buying them out. Yeah, we'll buy it. I'm actually getting a studio tattoo tomorrow, I think. Are you actually? Uh, I think, well, I, have, I was telling Trevor I have an appointment tomorrow, and I, it was to get my hand done, but I forgot I had this cut. Uh -huh. And he was like, yeah, it's, you can't tattoo over, like, healing flesh. And so I'm trying to decide what I want to do, and I'm like, I think I have to just do a studio tattoo. But I need to figure it out by tomorrow. Like uh -huh. your, if I on do your chest, yeah, or do it like anywhere. a barcode right there. I'd probably do it on my thigh. Oh, nice! But I don't know how to see figure it out. Right, come on, I wear five inches in some shorts. It's true. He wears boxer shorts. <laughs> well, I, no, I was making a different kind of joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you need help coming up with a design? I though? do. Either that, or I want to do like something camera related. I don't know. That'd be sick. I'm trying to figure it out, but. Shit. I'm dedicated, baby. It's a big commitment. And it will be really awkward if I ever get fired in the <laughs> studio slapped on me somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. Landon's like, um, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, you. I would. <laughs> maybe, maybe wait. Maybe like hold a few off. Days. Of, yeah. Maybe hold off on <laughs> it. Until our meeting on Monday, I'd, I'd wait. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's sweet. Well, since, since this episode was about, you know, work life balance, let's, let's end it off here. What is like, we'll, we'll just go around. What is like one thing that you've learned and like, come to like put into practice this last year to help with that work life balance. I don't have a work life balance. You don't have one? Okay. Studio we'll, is my life. We'll skip Kate. Bryson, you go <laughs> you go ahead. Uh I think the biggest thing is having a separate space for me personally. Yeah. Um yeah, before it's it's just hard to it's hard to separate when it's not separated. Mm -hmm. So having the office space has enabled me to leave at a certain time, get what I need to get done. And then a lot of the time, because I work off of my MacBook, I just plug it in for my monitors. And a lot of the time, I'll just, a lot of the time, <laughs> a lot of the time, <laughs> a lot of the time, I'll just leave it there plugged in, honestly, because when I go home, I'm not trying to work. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm pretty burnt out from a lot of these edits. So, yeah. Separate spot. Separate spaces. Yep, studio spaces. Okay, what, what do you think? What have I what? <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> what does, <laughs> what's the biggest what's thing? What's like the biggest thing you've, you've, you've come to realize and put into practice maybe this last yeah. year about work-life balance that's helped you out? Um, I feel like just having the patience to get it figured out and not like force yourself into a situation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I could have easily 
done things that wouldn't have been like financially smart or just kind of dumb in order to like try and force it. But obviously the situation that I ended up in was like a miracle almost in a sense, I would say. And it was just like with patience for sure miracle. that it, it came up the opportunity and like, I'm a huge believer in patience and like being patient for things to happen. Like I said, mm -hmm. I didn't start making money in the creative industry until like three and a half years after like loving it and putting money into equipment and whatnot. And so just being patient with it and doing what makes most sense for you. Like mm -hmm. if you're working out of your bedroom right now and you don't have any other options, then obviously there's different practices you can do to make it work a little bit better for you. But like, don't go take out some crazy amount of money or do anything like stupid to separate that work life balance, you know? Sure. I think, I think there's plenty of different ways you can make it work without putting yourself in a sticky situation, which that's what I was contemplating a lot before I moved all my stuff here. So hmm. it's a process. It is. Yeah. Trevor, what do you think? His light just went out. Trevor's camera. Yeah, so it's, no, the lighting's not great, great, but go ahead. Okay. Um, I would probably say separation. Um, I feel like the past year has helped me figure that out because when I was living up in Salt Lake, I was living with my best friend. And so after work, I just like went home and I, you know, we just like hung out. We were always doing something. And so I never like worked on my own personal brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to move down to Lehigh and have an office space and, you know, just like this separation of work and life and just being more committed to it has helped me work harder at work. And I wouldn't say like relax more at home, but like just be able to, to take that, that break. Yeah. Um, like I said, it kind of over, I kind of overdid it and stressed myself out a lot. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing that I learned was probably just, you know, separate it whenever I feel bogged down or overwhelmed with it all. Um, cause I, you could work forever. You could work, you know, every hour of the week on your own brand and, and it could be good or it could be bad, you know? So I don't know, just taking time whenever you realize that you need it. So, yeah, that's good. Mine would probably be just like sticking to a like a pretty strict schedule for yourself, you know, and not like in a way that's like really really hard to do, but in a way that shows discipline, you know, and and um, something that you can that you can keep doing for a long time. I feel like something you've been doing since I met you. I realized, and when I saw you doing, I was like, "Damn, this guy's different." Is having your notebook and just checking <laughs> things off throughout the day. Yeah. Like it's like I feel like an old man sometimes when you do that because it's like not a lot of people like don't actually do that you know, but um but yeah having having that schedule and like I I want to make a video on the, a YouTube video on this but like showing like how I'm how I do cross things off yeah. every what makes, day. What makes you prefer doing that than just clicking things on your phone? It's just dude, it's just satisfying. Yeah, it's just so satisfying. And so at the end of every day, I I open my notebook and I write the dates and then I write down all the things that need to happen, even like the things that are scheduled, like meetings and stuff yeah. like that. And I try to put it in order of when it's going to happen. And I just make it a goal. Like it's just a mental, you know, discipline yeah. goal that I, I create that I want to cross everything off the list every day. Yeah. And so I think having that schedule and having those tasks that need to happen. And I think, and not again, like not just crossing things off of the list, but crossing things off the list in a certain time frame yeah. in that work day. Um, and I think when you prioritize getting all those things done in from your in your nine to five or whatever your your time frame is, once that's done, it's like, oh, like it's rewarding. It's it's super rewarding. Yeah. And like now I can go and like be with my family, or if in your case, I can go to the gym and like mm -hmm. actually like have a good time, not be thinking about work in the back of my head. And so I think the time frame and sticking to a set schedule and really being disciplined on that is so valuable. And I think as a freelancer, it's really hard to have that drive and motivation and the you know the the ability to stick to a schedule because no one's telling you what to do yeah. um but i think once you can kind of master that and uh and do that daily you get into a really good rhythm and it becomes really easy Definitely. to be a, to be uh, productive so yeah that's uh All right, i will start designing some studio branded please productivity checklists please. notebooks notebooks I need it studio. i thought it, com. i thought about it Maybe one day. Yeah, That'd be yeah. sick. Matt Black, everything. That'd be cool. That'd be sweet. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on this episode of By The Way, a studio podcast. Thanks for joining us. Bryson, Cade, Trevor behind the camera. Thank you 
the camera's not on me. Thank you <laughs> for listening, watching this. Uh, if you're not watching this, you can watch this on Spotify. I've got a few comments of people saying that they wish they could watch this on YouTube like they used to. I'm going to start uploading it back to YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's been a great episode. Thanks yeah, for really joining us, you guys. Happy to be here. Go ahead, leave a review. If you have a second, give us a follow. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.